Hey everyone, uh, my name's Chris, I'm the training manager for Training Division and we're coming to you live from the AB office. So today I'd like to just discuss one of the products that we recently launched in November last year, the Applied Ballistics Precision Data Book. Now, rather than just discussing this product and what it offers uh, to shooters, I'm going to go through today for the next 30 or 60 minutes in detail how you can maximize this product and what it can potentially offer you, uh, things, features, and, um, features and things that this product may be capable of that you weren't otherwise aware of. So the way this product conceptually came about, I was actually preparing for World's Longest Shot in Texas in 2018 and I was shooting a, a TRG a 42 or Seiko and I was preparing uh, establishing my muzzle velocity uh, confirming my long range zero uh, sorry short range zero tall target test sight scale factor etc and as I was doing the build up for that weapon system I was writing these things down on a right in the rain pad and I really thought to myself well it'd be really handy if we had some kind of some kind of hard copy single source document that allowed shooters to record everything pertaining to their AV device in one single location. And so from that, the Applied Ballistics Precision Data Book was kind of conceptually uh, born. I worked with a lot of the Applied Ballistics team to bring this project to fruition. And um, as I go through and detail what this uh, product is capable of in terms of supporting users and shooters use of uh, Applied Ballistics devices, it'll become more apparent that this uh, product itself, the Precision Data Book, is not so much a data book as much as it is a, pr the, pr it provides the primary function of supporting shooters to utilize the AV devices. Uh, in particular for this uh, version one, the Garmin 701 uh, Fortrex Ballistics Edition, the Kestrel 5700 Elite uh, Link, and the SIG Kilo 2400 ABS. So, I'm going to start going through here and um, showing you exactly what is detailed within the sections. But this product, it's 155 pages of uh, double-sided pages. It's pr printed on right in the rain paper. And it's definitely modular and interchangeable. Now, when we started designing this product, we looked at what was originally out there in the market, what the generic data book had been utilized for, and how we could make that better. And so the first thing we decided to integrate was the uh, tabs here. Now, there's six tabs. This uh, product is being divided into six different sections. And the reason we incorporated the tabs is so that the users have a quick and easy reference to move to an individual section for that product. The other thing I'd like to point out is now that we've incorporated the tabs in this product, we have extended the binder out and as a result, the cover that's been developed here in Multicam and Kyo, uh, it fits the Applied Ballistics Precision Data Book binder, uh, which is slightly longer and larger than your generic data book cover as a function of accommodating the tabs across the front here. So going into the uh, front of the Precision Data Book here, we can see that our first page, we have a area to enter our personal details and our emergency contact information. And then we enter into the actual uh, primary function of this product, which is the recording of data uh, pertaining to our gun profiles. So here, this is one of the sheets that I'm currently utilizing for the Applied Ballistics Training Division uh, training weapon system, which you can see is a Cadex uh, light chassis with an R7 sheepdog action, and it's been chambered in 300 Norma Mag. Now, this particular weapon was built by AB Weapons Division, and it absolutely shoots lights out. But you can see here, I've started generating all of the, uh, the data on hard copy so that if I'm ever presented with a scenario where I lose my device or the information electronically that's recorded my gun profile, I still have this hard copy that allows me to repopulate this on a different device. 
Uh, next, we've got the function of ammunition data sheets. And you can see here I've recorded what exactly uh, the ammunition components I'm utilizing for this weapon system. So for this particular ammunition data sheet, I'm utilizing the uh, 215 Burger Hybrid, and that's uh, factory match ammunition. And I've also got information here pertaining to uh, the scope and for shooters looking at zeroing their weapon system at uh, longer ranges rather than a short range zero, which isn't necessarily recommended for most uh, long range shooting functions. But if you do opt to you know, establish a 200 plus yard or meter zero, you do have the capability to record the atmospherics, uh, the environmentals for which that weapon was zeroed within. Uh, here you'll note on this side that we have uh, the fields to record our bullet data and relating back to what drag standard we're referencing. So whether that be G1, G7, CDM or a PDM. Uh, you'll also note here you've got a, a place to enter any muzzle velocity variation for feet per second per degrees. And then moving on, we've, we've got, you'll note, there's actually uh, multiple ammunition sheets uh, contained within this product. And so if you are utilizing a different type of ammunition uh, for our military and law enforcement shooters that may very well switch between different ammunition natures or types, they're able to establish the uh, zero height, zero offset of that ammunition and as a, against their primary zero for their weapon system. You'll also note that I've moved the tall target test to the front here. Uh, now this tall target test was completed a few days ago for a 10 mil hold uh, for the, a night force scope with the tremor free reticle in it. Now, when I went and conducted this tall target test, I confirmed my sight scale factor. And then I also carried out another test for a 20, a 20 mil dialed adjustment uh, on another tall target. Once this tall target was complete, this tall target test was complete, and I had compiled my sight scale factors, calculated my sight scale factors for that uh, scope, I went ahead and moved these two pages, or this single double-sided page, to the front so it relates back to my weapon system and my gun profile. And now I have a completed tall target test page at the front of my gun profile notes. The other point to note is, again, for those, those guys changing um, systems where a situation may arise where you have to change a scope from one weapon system to another. If you're a uh, shooter that likes to cross a scope over from one weapon to another, if you're, you know... Uh, utilizing high-end scopes and minimizing how many you're purchasing by changing them over onto Picatinny rails or something, well, you're able to remove this from the data book itself uh, from one gun, gun profile section to another or in a scenario where you're uh, changing a scope from one military or law enforcement weapon system to another weapon system, you would then be able to hand this tall target test sheet over to the other shooter. So essentially this tall target test sheet is able to follow the scope and it doesn't necessarily pertain to the, the weapon system itself, but rather the scope. So you'll also note here that uh, we have a muzzle velocity measurement chart. Now this muzzle velocity measurement uh, chart was designed to support primarily the Infinition Lab Radar. And as a result, we have here a lot of our uh, parameters that we would seek to capture while conducting a muzzle velocity measurement with a chronograph. Uh, this will work in conjunction with the magneto speed, any other chronograph, uh, but it has definitely been designed around the outputs of the, uh, the lab radar itself. Now you can see that I've gone ahead and uh, measured some muzzle velocity measurements over 10 shot strings uh, a few days ago at various temperatures and these temperatures here and then establishing the averages across those temperatures allows me to establish what my foot per second variation is per degree which is outlined back here. So 
You'll also note that there's uh, three sections on the front of this sheet and then three sections on the back. That aligns with the six uh, input fields that you have available to you on AB devices for the Kestrel, uh, the Secular app, and the Garmin Fortrek uh, 701 Ballistic Edition. And this was the spare ammunition data chart I was speaking of earlier that allows a user to uh, populate the, any uh, zero hide or zero offset information for a weapon system that was zeroed with maybe a different, um, a different bullet. And here we have a round count log. I've slipped the round count log towards the front uh, within the profiles information section again, because again, it relates back to the weapon system and the gun profile itself. Uh, the reason I've moved this forward to the front is because with that new barrel that's on that weapon system and the uh, the the way or so the way that uh, gun's been chambered in 300 Norma mag, I expect that velocity to migrate slightly over the first few hundred rounds and then settle in. And so with this round count log at the front here, I'm able to accurately and efficiently track what my muzzle velocity is doing as I measure it over lab radar and uh, confirm and track what round count I have on the barrel. Then moving into the data section. So as I said, this uh, product, it primarily supports the function of understanding how to utilize your AB device uh, more efficiently on the range. Uh, and then secondarily, it provides the user with a means to collect data and record data. So noting that we've included an impact shift summary here for any impact shift you might note from alternate positions. And you'll note here that I have a cold clean bore section, a cold foul bore section, which is yet to be populated. Um, and I don't want to go ahead and populate that until I have uh, a, a few, maybe a few more hundred rounds on that Norma mag barrel there so that it's, the barrel's really settled in and I'm establishing a quite a precise uh, measurement for any um, point of impact offset that I might observe. Uh, due to a cold clean bore or a cold foul bore shot. You'll also note here that I've established um, my any offset for various alternate positions for Hawkins sitting, kneeling, standing. And I've generated this, this uh, impact shift summary utilizing the, um, or populating it with the data here on the side for the, my Kdex R7 with the 215 hybrid. But the point to note here, I've utilized a short range zero uh, being 92 meters and I've noted this on the chart so that I know that when I conducted these, um, when I conducted these measurements and I, I generated this chart, I was able to um, do this. I, I conducted this at 92 meters and so I understand what my offset is and how that's relative to the range that I'm shooting at. You'll also note that this uh, this product is slightly thinner than what it, it comes with. It does come with a generous amount of pages. Uh, what I would recommend is it, the user guide that it comes with explains that users should go ahead and take some of the pages out just to make it a bit easier to uh, utilize this product to flip through the pages. And so I've gone ahead and done that. I'm storing my pages in here, the front section here. So what, I, what I've also done is I've populated a trajectory drop table um, utilizing the ICAO chart, which is in references here. Now, referencing the ICAO chart, I'm able to use a software such as AB Analytics or Point Mass Solver to enter the environmental uh, atmospherics to establish uh, the atmosphere that I'm calculating the trajectory drop table for. In this case, it's um, the ICAO standard for what equals a thousand uh, feet density attitude. Now, one point to note with uh, calculating these trajectory drop tables, if you're utilizing a software or a program and you're referencing just density attitude, it's important that you understand if you're not utilizing temperature to calculate the uh, trajectory prediction of a uh, for a firing solution that 
the program is unable to calculate the correct speed of sound and subsequently calculate the correct Mach number for the bullet. So in that scenario, the, uh, the solver is unable to assign the correct drag coefficient and the integrity of the firing solution is going to suffer. So the key point to note from that is utilize where you can temperature, pressure and humidity and then just note the density altitude that you're utilizing that chart for. So I've gone ahead and populated this chart for a 1,000 foot, per sec uh, foot density attitude, again for my KDEX uh, R7 with the 215 grain hybrid. And I've generated that off of an adjusted muzzle, average muzzle velocity of 2903 feet per second. And that's for 55.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So utilizing my variation that I've noted uh, earlier and that I established over lab radar, I've been able to utilize that variation to adjust my muzzle velocity to the temperature, the ambient temperature that I expect, and subsequently the muzzle velocity that I expect at that temperature. And so generating this, uh, this trajectory drop table here, I have my elevation drop, drift, velocity, kinetic energy, and time of flight. I've generated this out to 2000. Now, that's uh, quite a timely process to generate a trajectory drop table. There's a lot of uh, information that has to be filled. So I did this purely um, as a means to demonstrate how this uh, trajectory drop table might be utilized. And you'll also note that with the same environmental parameters, I've populated the wind deflection table for, again, a DA of 1,000 feet. And I've populated that out to 2,000 um, 2, meters as well. But I've noted here at the table wind speed down the bottom, I've utilized a 10 mile per hour um, wind speed to establish uh, the wind deflection table. And the reason I've utilized 10 miles per hour is it provides me with a value that's easy to multiply or divide uh, in a scenario where we weren't receiving 10 miles per hour of wind. So next we've got a uh, moving target lead tables and this moving target lead table allows the user to populate the range down this side here um, and then moving target speeds across here and you can populate it for a, uh, a lead value. I would recommend doing a full lead value um, or the, the lateral movement that the shooter is observing. Now, what that allows you to do is populate a hard, a hard source moving target lead table and reference that as required. So then moving into uh, cold bore, you, you'll note here that I've conducted a previous cold bore. I've noted down, um, again, what gun profile I'm utilizing, the ammunition, the, um, the temperature, pressure, humidity, and density attitude. Now, there's two things with this. You can utilize this cold bore sheet as a cold bore um, point of impact offset to, uh, to record that and then ac account for that point of impact offset uh, due to cold cold bore uh, in the future, or you can utilize this sheet for a farther target engagement where you might be engaging a target out to 500, 1,000, 2,000 odd meters, and it is cold bore. In that scenario, you would be able to utilize this sheet uh, recording your zero range and then also populating your true target range Right, you can see I've just done this at short range for 92 meters, zero range and 92 meters, uh, the target range here. Now, if you were going to utilize this sheet for that farther distance or long range target, you would just populate that for whatever the target range was and then note uh, any elevation or windage adjustment for your cold bore and then what the subsequent adjustment would be here. So that's more of a, a secondary function of this sheet 
Uh, this sheet primarily intended for the shooter to be able to record what their cold bore point of impact offset is. Uh, and then moving on to alternate position. I did a lot of work with alternate position shooting um, a few days ago. And so one of the primary functions of the alternate position sheet is to give shooters the adequate means to record any, again, any point of impact offset that you're likely to observe due to uh, shooting from an alternate position where the shooter is manipulating the weapon system differently, the position and hold is slightly different, and as a result, the shooter may very well experience um, a slight change or a slight shift in point of impact due to the way they're manipulating that weapon system. Now, if the shooter goes ahead and populates these uh, sheets, utilizing uh, these sheets to record all of the information, record the position that they're utilizing. You'll note that I, we've tried to make this easy for the shooter where the shooter can just select uh, what type of position he's firing from and then what type of support mechanism he's using. So then after we've uh, populated all that, we're able to um, record on the side here where our uh, fall of shot is occurring for each subsequent round and then whether we're making any adjustments to our elevation or windage. Again, like the cold board, this sheet can also be utilized for a short range point of impact shift um, measurement or, whether, or if you're engaging a target at longer range from an alternate position, you would again be able to utilize that the same way uh, as you would with the cold board sheet. But you can see here that I've uh, conducted this um, this point of impact offset measurement from sitting tripod and I s recorded a group of three centimeters uh, at 92 meters there from sitting tripod. Now, as I've elevated my position, you can see that I've recorded my group size down here in notes uh, for each subsequent alternate position that I've, I've utilized and noted my point of impact offset. But I've also noted the group size so that I have an adequate understanding of what my shooting capability is at short range and what my expectation is to engage a target successfully, what my hit probability looks like within the target dimensions at long range when I'm shooting from that alternate position. So by noting what my, uh, my group size is, I'm able to adequately manage my expectations and note what my hit probability may be just based on the overall target dimensions at that longer range. So you can see that as I continue to elevate my position, I, uh, my group size starts to open up, which is consistent with being less stable. And by the time I uh, get to standing, I'm utilizing a tripod and a sling to support my, uh, my weapon system. But I have an overall group size of about five centimeters. Now, going back and then utilizing a rear, um, a rear monopod, I was able to reduce that group size to two centimeters for both uh, sitting and kneeling. So in that scenario, being able to record what my group sizes were from alternate position to alternate position and then go back and test a different alternate position, I was able to establish what my, again, what not only what my hit probability looks like, but how effective that alternate position is compared to the other alternate position support mechanisms that I was using. So then moving into single target, uh, this single target offers the shooter, again, with a way to record single target engagement, whether that be at short range or long range, uh, whether it be a short range zero or long range target engagement. But this one has a, a area for 10 rounds and rather than the five, like the cold bore in the alternate position. And you'll also note that down here, like the others, we have a section here for target lead. So these walk in, these work into um, all of these sheets work into target speed and move angle. So in a scenario where you weren't engaging a moving target, you could uh, you, you just ignore these fields or populate them with not applicable. Uh, but it does allow shooters to utilize these same sheets for moving targets as well. 
And then moving on to the multi-target sketch sheet. This multi-target sketch sheet came about for shooters that are more inclined to have to maybe sketch an engagement area or are involved with the sniper style competitions, uh, particularly pertains to law enforcement and military shooters again, where they may very well be shooting at an unknown distance range or a field firing range where they might need to create a engagement area sketch. Now this sheet here supports that and the shoe is able to populate um, a left and right of arc the f for which the shooter has line of sight and record name, uh, date and time location. Now the important thing here to note is if you were to take uh, this sheet out, you would also be able to populate any uh, target, uh, any targets using the target card function of the AV devices. And you'll note that there's uh, 10 perimeter field lines here for 10 targets that match up to the target card uh, function of the AV device. But if you were to be changing, uh, changing out between shooters or, t or teams in uh, a different scenario or different environment, uh, the, those shooters would then be able to take this card out and provide that to the next team or the next shooter. So it does allow a good degree of versatility um, and a good degree of practicality, noting though that the uh, card would be populated on a particular gun profile. If you're utilizing the same gun profile and the same gun parameters, uh, the and the muzzle velocity was very similar. Again, this card would very well match up for the, the next shooter. So moving on then, uh, this is these portions of the data book are definitely some of the most important. And again, is this is the information that provides the uh, shooter with the primary mechanism of support to run the AB devices. So you should be thinking about... Uh, you should be thinking about these sections as a means to support any practical questions that you may have on the range where uh, you may have some issues, uh, for instance, calibrating ballistics or anything like that. Uh, if you're in need of a conversion uh, constant, you'll find it in this is here. So we've got information pertaining to the ICAO uh, standard velocity decay uh, calculating velocity decay and how that pertains to utilizing a um, generic chronograph where the shooter may have to place the chronograph of three, you know, three feet in front of the muzzle and how that pertains to um, velocity loss near the muzzle. The scope calibration, and you'll note that there's also a lot of examples through this here as well. So in a scenario where you may not understand the, the instructions of the reference material here, there's usually always an example um, to go with it to allow the shooter to um, work with the information and then correctly apply it. Uh, high angle shooting, moving targets. Now when we did the moving targets, uh, what myself and one of the engineers here were able to do was generate the constants for some of the other units of measure and uh, distance units that may not have been uh, available in the past. And by providing those constants, it allows the shooter to utilize variations of different uh, distance units and different units of measure um, for angular adjustment, whether that be mils, inches per hundred yards or true MOA. Uh, we've also included a section about range, range estimation. And then moving into AB programs, which is probably the most important section in here. AB programs pertains to uh, all AB devices, uh, in particular AB software, such as the AB mobile app, uh, AB analytics. And this AB programs page is just a generic section that will apply to all AB devices. But as we go through here, we can see that it starts to become more specific for the Kestrel uh, Elite where we've got uh, different user interfaces and user notes. We also have screen maps. So a shooter can quickly reference these screen maps to determine where they might be uh, looking for a submenu. And it also provides little bits of information uh, throughout these, uh, these portions of this section 
which pertains to the, the use and the employment of the individual device itself. So as I was saying, this product, it encompasses the Kestrel 5700, uh, the Garmin Fortrex 701 uh, Ballistics Edition. And you can see there's, there's a lot of information pertaining to uh, each of these devices here. And then lastly, the uh, SIG Kilo 2400 ABS. Uh, there's also a note, uh, there's a section in here for users that are utilizing the SIG Kilo 2400 ABS, which pertains to laser alignment and confirming where that laser alignment might be in their individual device. And so from within this section, the user is able to note where that laser alignment occurs uh, for ranging onto targets uh, in the future. So then we've got a section here that pertains to external ballistic summaries, which is just general practical external ballistic summaries where uh, you might be running into an issue with um, a particular external ballistics effect such as aerodynamic jump and you decide, well, I don't really know too much about aerodynamic jump, so if maybe I can find it in the precision data book and determine what that effect is doing and how I can, I can account for it, in which case you would definitely find that information here. And then lastly, towards the very end, we've got a notes section where users can input their ranging dimensions for uh, milling targets. They can also uh, input any other uh, dimensions for target parameters in particular. Uh, it, we have a page here that allows the user to record any firmware updates for their device and notes pages. And that basically summarizes this product. You can see that it comes in a durable uh, multicam and coyote cover. Uh, we have sections in here that allow the user to um, take pages out and input these or hold these pages in with the shock cord here. And then we also have pockets within this cover which accommodates the Accuracy First whiz wheel and any stencils you might be utilizing. Now, the other thing I'd like to uh, note is we have top-up packs so a user can refill this, this product if they are running low on pages. The top-up packs come in two configurations, a gun profile top-up pack, which pertains to gun profiles themselves. And it also comes with um, muzzle velocity measurement, drop scale factor, calibration, and muzzle velocity calibration cards. Um, and that there uh, is slightly different to the configuration for the data top-up pack, which pertains to the data uh, pages themselves if you were looking for a data top-up pack. For non-Australians, that's refills. Mm. <laughs> so that basically summarizes this product. Um, uh, one last note, you can, if you're utilizing a calculator or some other device, uh, you can go ahead and place some Velcro on the, uh, the front of your device and stick it onto the front of the, the cover here, if you're that way inclined. So um, having summarized the AB Precision Data Book as a whole. Um, I'll move on to discussing Applied Ballistics Training Division. <laughs> so Applied Ballistics Training Division, uh, we expanded into the commercial sector just recently, having launched publicly a few weeks ago. Now, for the last 12 odd months, we've been working on uh, four different highly specialized uh, course curriculum packages for uh, different commercial, for different shooters and shooters of all skill levels. So the first course package is the Long Range Essentials course package. And that course package relates to a shooter that's starting up. He has a long range weapon system and he might have an AB device or he might be trying to figure out what AB device suits him best. Now, the other point to note is training division has training devices like the Kestrel 5700, Elite AB and the Garmin Fortrex 701. Um, ballistics edition and so in that scenario the shooter would be able to at attend long-range essentials 
and be able to decide which device maybe suits his shooting needs best, uh, what device aligns with his uh, shooting application and his intended shooting objective. And so that course really provides the necessary information for a shooter to um, start effectively engaging targets at longer range. Um, it's not so much a beginner's course as much as it is a basic introduction to um, long range external ballistics effects and the use of AV devices in a practical setting to um, establish how to utilize the devices best to get those target hits at long range. The second course is, uh, is effective LR and the effective LR course pertains to wind reading and practical device use. So within that course, uh, it details and uh, it contains a lot of practical shooting application in alternate positions, uh, wind reading, and how to get the most out of your AV device from a practical employment uh, standpoint, covering features you may not have known the AV device has and uh, different types of courses of fire. We really start looking at um, dialing versus holding reticle and then uh, how to apply that at longer range in multiple uh, different terrain scenarios where you may have multiple different crosswinds to account for. The third course is Max Effective LR and this course particularly relates to pushing the maximum effective weapons range of your individual system and utilizing that system into extended long range for those, those extended long range target engagements. Uh, during that course, uh, you will go ahead and generate a muzzle velocity temp table uh, and subsequently that'll be a function of doing temp sensitivity testing uh, with the guys from AV training division and the AV laboratory. And it also relates to, again, advanced device use of the AV devices themselves. Basically, although we provide training devices for these events where shooters could utilize a Kestrel 5700 or the uh, Garmin, a shooter is able to bring their own device uh, if they're just utilizing the AV mobile app and they wish to establish how to get the most out of their, their mobile app. Well, basically, if it runs an AV solver, we can train it. And then the fourth course is a rehash. It's a fine-tuned course. Uh, it's called uh, Long Range Limits. And that course provides the user with an environment to confirm any, uh, any knowledge or any information, practical device use over various courses of fire, against the clock. Maybe a shooter attends that as a tune-up, uh, going into another competition or just wants to go back and tune up and refine their skills for maybe a long range hunt that's coming up in the, in the future. Either way, that provides the environment for uh, shooters to come in, um, confirm previous knowledge, test their skills against the clock on um, various different, different types of targets in different terrains and different environments uh, with AB trainers present so that they can uh, feed and, uh, off of that experience and that knowledge and then advance their skill sets. Uh, additionally, we also look at offering uh, clinics and those clinics pertain to uh, different things that we may have on offer. Uh, as an example, right now, we have an Applied Ballistics Laboratory Clinic, uh, which is two days duration in September. And that Applied Ballistics Laboratory Clinic offers shooters the, um, the ability to gain access to the Applied Ballistics Laboratory and confirm some of their system gun profile and device inputs over some of the most technologically advanced equipment uh, available, such as Doppler radar. So in that scenario, a shooter is more looking to confirm what type of inputs they're, um, they're getting from their weapon system, whether there's any initial launch dynamic or what type of effective BC they're, they're getting from their weapon system. and Essentially, that's uh, minimizing any error in uh, the ballistic inputs within their device. And that's subsequently going to relate back to uh, a more accurate firing solution output. 
Additionally, for the uh, military and law enforcement guys, there is a trainee request portal on the Applied Ballistics uh, Training Division website, and that can be found in the Military and Law Enforcement tab there. That training request portal uh, comes direct back to the office, and then uh, we would, in that scenario, start to contact you directly to establish what that uh, training request may look like. We also offer partner services. Now, the partner services uh, aspect of training division is something that we've been uh, working in conjunction with Call Sign 66 in Canada to bring applied ballistics training into Canada uh, in conjunction with that, that partnership with Call Sign 66. And we also currently have uh, partnered training with Vortex Optics as well. So keep an eye on Vortex and uh, Call Sign 66 uh, for any applied ballistics partner training events that may occur in the near future. And that's something that we continue to uh, to remain active within to uh, work with the uh, partnered entities and um, essentially uh, provide some extra uh, knowledge and instruction on AV specific devices. Uh, lastly, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, uh, Applied Ballistics Training Division, and go ahead and visit our website. Um, it's just freshly up, uh, as opposed, I think, a few weeks ago that went up. So definitely go ahead and have a look at that. And then you'll note on the uh, online store is where you will find all of our course dates. Uh, I guess we'll take questions now. We have a few questions, do we? Or? Um, the first question is, would you say certain courses are geared to specific ranges and calibers? Or is it just what you are currently using? Okay, so certain courses, uh, you will maximize your hit probability if you're running, say, a 375 or a 338 enabler over um, you know, a, a 30 cal uh, 308 win. Now, it really is up to the user to uh, decide which weapon system they want to utilize in all courses, you would be able to utilize a, um, a weapon system, you know, that is your choosing. But you will definitely get more out of a course if you're running, say, a 300 Norma Mag um, or a 338 Lepore Magnum or a 338 Enabler or something um, that's going to allow you to engage at those further ranges. But the whole premise of uh, the Max Effective LR course is to provide the shooter with the environment to really push their individual weapon system into the trans and subsonic flight regimes. So it's not so much about being competitive on those courses where you may very well be engaging a target out to you know 2,000 plus yards, uh, potentially 15, 1,500 to 2,000 plus yards, but it's more so about understanding uh, your weapon system how your particular bullet flies through the transonic and the subsonic flight regime, what type of hit probability you expect from that weapon system and how you can maximize that to really uh, maximize the effectiveness and the effective use of that weapon system itself. What else are you up to me? Um, some guy, Eric Stittler says, is the booklet up on the website? The AV Precision Data Book is available on uh, both the Applied Ballistics uh, online store and the Applied Ballistics Training Division online store. Uh, you'll also note that the top-up packs are available on the uh, Applied Ballistics Training Division online store too. I don't assume that anyone really needs top-up packs at this point in time in the world, um, unless you're doing a lot of shooting. But, uh, I mean, as I said, the AB data book comes with a generous amount of pages. So I'd be surprised if someone had managed to get through them all um, this early on since product release. But nevertheless, they are there and they are available. What else you got for me, Zach? Um, uh, can you talk about the paper it's printed on? Okay, the paper it's printed on is uh, 32 pounds, uh, right the rain paper, so it is water resistant. What we did was when we started generating this product, we uh, went ahead and fully submerged the uh, product or the paper under salt water to see how it um, holds up against salt water and what type of expectation we had on this paper to not smudge the ink, um, that it would last, that it would um, work in the rain, you know, that it would hold up to its, <laughs> its company's name. 
and the paper performed extremely well. Um, I mean, obviously, if the paper is is wet, you know, it's not going to be that easy to write on the paper. If it's saturated, there's there's a possibility that it'll tear. But for the most part, when we went ahead and fully submerged that paper in the water, even despite that water being uh, fully saturated, sorry, the uh, paper fully saturated, once we dried that page out, we were able to utilize that page like any other page in the Applied Ballistics uh, data book. Anything else? Uh, do you have to take any of the courses in order? No, so you don't have to take the courses in order. You'll find on the, uh, the training division website, there is a list of prereqs uh, that is recommended for you to engage effectively with course content. And that just allows you to come into a course that may be well suited for your skill level and then gain the best, uh, the best most effective amount of knowledge out of that course. Um, so that you can you can go away and apply uh, apply that instruction and that knowledge um, in your own time at long range. Again, what I would suggest is if there is any discrepancy uh, between what the prereqs may be and and what you believe your skill level to be, I would um, definitely encourage uh, people to call training division and just speak to training division directly uh, on what their concerns are regarding the prereqs. Uh, but I do feel like the prereqs are quite well outlined and if you can if you can analyze those prereqs for a course and um, sit there honestly and know that you can do this this and this like I would encourage you to look at taking a course that's um, relative to your skill level and what you're trying to achieve out of a course as well um, two questions, but they're very similar. Does it need a special right in the rain pen, or did you test it with regular pens and pencils? So I did test the paper with regular pens and pencils. All of the um, all of the paper, uh, sorry, all of the pages that I generated for the three hundred Norma Mag in the previous days, I wrote on uh, those pages with regular pen. Uh, I don't necessarily like writing on these pages with uh, pencil. There's no problem doing that, that definitely accommodates it. However, um, I just don't really uh, feel the need to rub things out in pencil. I'll just go get another, um, another page. And so when I'm utilizing pens, I have noted though that some pens, pens work very effectively on paper. You just need to test the, the pens on the paper and see how they work. But Definitely, like in most cases, there's absolutely no issues with utilizing regular pen on this paper. The Sharpie works uh, uh, very effectively as well. Alcohol, map markers. Yep, map markers. Oh, what else you got for me? Uh, that's it. That's it? Nothing. All right. Well, no problems at all, guys. I think, I hope uh, you found the last 60 odd minutes of uh, Facebook Live uh, from the AB office uh, informative and have a bit more of an understanding of what this product is able to offer you and how it um, is able to support your your employment of those particular devices and AB devices in general and have a bit more of an overview of what training division is doing and uh, where we're looking to go in the future and um, have a good day. Oh, yeah.